What it do, what it do, man. We back in this thing. I got Quan over there, chilling. Got baby Brooke over there, He's hanging playing. out. Oh, okay. <laughs> we just got back. Bria had a dance performance downtown. Uh, that's why That's why Quan is looking so amazing right there. And I was actually at work. I was uh, running a roll-off truck, and I left to go watch it. So that's why I look like a kind of like a bum. But anyway. Never. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to tell you about what's going on with this truck before y'all get into the video. Two times now, the dually has had an issue hauling heavier loads. The first time it happened, I was hauling a uh, Ram 5500. And I had it in cruise control, and I was going about 60, 65. That particular time, I was going up a pretty big hill, and I only had... I think it was like 75 miles to empty, which is not a whole lot when you're pulling 12 to 14,000 pounds. That's what the load was. The trailer is 4,000. That truck had to be about seven or eight, I would assume, around 5,500, maybe even 9,000 pounds. But I was going up a hill, I had the cruise control on, and it's, it just started puttering, sputtering, and shaking. And they gave me that P0087 code. Um, so originally i thought it was just out of you know out of diesel or whatever but i had five gallons in in the bed so i put that in i made it about 15 miles and filled it up and i didn't have a problem again uh, fast forward that must have been that was the beginning of may today is like middle of june so fast forward about six or seven weeks i hauled this silverado 3500 in this video you're about to watch and kind of the same thing that truck had a job box in the back and a auxiliary fuel tank that he said was full. So we thinking that truck was 12,000 pounds or so. And kind of the same thing, man. We was going up the interstate, going about 70. And, uh, you know, the truck was trying to keep keep it at that 70 mile an hour. And it did the same thing. It spun it two times. And then the, the check engine light came on and it was P0087. I couldn't, I couldn't give it no gas. It wouldn't go. So we pulled over, turned it off. I cleared the code out and I took it another two hours or so just using the damn, uh, my foot, not using cruise control and I didn't have a problem again. So I don't know if it's the, you know, when it's in cruise control, it's trying to over rev and damn keep, keep that high speed. I don't know if that's it or if I actually have like a fuel injector problem or um, a fuel pump problem. So. I gotta get that checked out, um, but that's that's why I live by the motto that my uh, my old boss taught me is two is one and one is none. So if you got two trucks, you got one truck. If you got one truck, you got zero trucks if one go down. So that's why I'm working so hard, man, to uh, expand and get a uh, day cab is what I really want. Um, can be a single axle or a tandem axle. I got my eye on one. I've been saving up towards it, but man, I gotta. I gotta make some shake, cause if the dually goes down, that's gonna be uh, we don't have nothing else running. We don't have the white truck running yet, and of course this one is basically about to turn into a show truck since we bought that one. This one's supposed to be the backup, ten toes down truck. So we gotta make some shake, man. The beast has been good to me since 2018. I, I actually bought it June. Damn, I bought it June 24th, 2018, and we just had June 24th. Was that today? Yesterday. Yesterday. So today's the 25th, so I, I had the beast for four years yesterday. That's pretty crazy. But anyway, uh, y'all weigh in. Let me know what y'all think. Is it, uh, you think it is an actual injector problem, a fuel pump problem? I got a lift pump on the truck, too. Keep that in mind. So that typically prolongs the fuel pump a little bit. But it could be injectors. It could be a fuel pump. Um, it could be the heavy load. It could be the cruise control. Um, you know. Y'all know how cruise control is. I'm so used to cruise control, I use it whether I'm loaded, full, empty. I use cruise control everywhere. So I'm thinking that's the problem, man, because, you know, it, it really revs up real high to keep that speed. So for me to make it back without, a, without it doing it again, I'm wondering if that's what it is. So y'all tap in, let me know what y'all think, and uh, hopefully y'all enjoy this video, man. 10 toes, that's my MO. What it do, what it do, we in this thing, man. Y'all see the beast, we out here. Uh, we are actually in Augusta, Georgia, and I'm picking up 
this 3500 right here something happened to it um so uh, i had a call from a customer i ran for about three months ago and uh i gave him a price told him uh i can get it picked up i think i'm charging him like 950 for this gotta pick it up take it 100 something miles, 150 miles matter of fact i think it was like 148 actually but i had to come quite a ways to get to it it took me from where i was at it took me two and a half hours to get here so um yeah this is it right here it's a long bed four door so that stuff is going to take up the whole trailer but it'll be fine we got to take it to griffin georgia to the chevy dealership uh it's a 3500 but it is a single wheel which is cool easier to load shouldn't have no problem it's got a little weight to it i'm i'm sure got it rated for eighteen thousand pounds but uh yeah it should be lightweight man hey we really haven't done much this week it has been an awful week uh the rates have not been worth a damn this week but that's how it goes sometimes um yeah i haven't run i ran a few pedals uh i ran one yesterday aside from pedal was like 175 dollars to go 60 something miles but i really haven't done much this has been a slow week last week i didn't work at all i worked for uh my old job solid waste i just uh you know i work for them part-time on an as-needed basis either when they're really really short or when i'm uh got my truck in the shop or whatever reason so but it's been slow man but it's all good you know i still enjoy working for myself i ain't got no overhead no truck no no trailer no so it's fine man you know a lot of people out there are struggling i hope uh i hope it turns around man some people ain't got to go out of business you never want anybody to struggle but uh for us here at 10 toes down man it's still still going pretty good so i can't complain but uh yeah buddy should be coming out soon and uh we're gonna get get them loaded up shoot man get them get them to the house stick around and uh I'll be back with y'all in a minute all right y'all so it's got a fuel leak it does still run which is good it's easier to deal with so it's got a fuel leak and uh i don't have to uh use the winch so i need to run this back in run this back in and we'll drive it up and we'll be up out of here man much quicker than i expected get this thing get this thing running on up there diesel Hey, see y'all. I got more ramps I use sometimes, but I think it's tall enough. Once I drive up on there, it should lift up. Smell the diesel already. Let's see how close we are, y'all. Should have had him drive it up. Yeah, leaking like hell. Just a hair. Yeah. This is a pretty good leak. 
Yeah. Hold on to it. Oh damn, I gotta let the window up. Alright. Let these ramps up and put straps on it. Oh yeah, that was perfect. Yeah, that was perfect right there. Don't make no sense how hot it is down here in Georgia, man. Jesus Christ. We got it though. Y'all know when it's a heavier vehicle, I like to do all four wheels. Um, I don't necessarily do it on smaller cars because usually they're going 10, 20 miles from my area to the auction. Long trips and heavy vehicles, I do all four. But beast, we got it loaded up. I'm gonna go. I'll probably cut y'all on at delivery. Probably be about two and a half, three hours away. Um, but yeah, that's it. We're on the way. Three hours later. You got it? You got it? Yes, sir. There you go. You got all your stuff out of the truck? You good? All right, good to meet you, brother. All right, y'all. This is a uh, done deal right here. Look at these ramps up. So do. Beast had some issues today, y'all. It's not the first time either. I'll tell y'all about it. Stand by. That's a big son of a gun. Walk around and make sure my brakes and everything is good. Tire good. Ain't no excessive heat. Yeah, we good. He said he think that thing weighed about 12,000 pounds. I wouldn't doubt it. The auxiliary fuel tank was full. It was a 3,500. And it had a big old toolbox in the back too. So, but, uh, so let me tell y'all what I got shake. I don't know if I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you while I'm driving. Um, I guess, I, I guess I'll tell you now. So look, this is the second time this has happened. Um, I think I took a screenshot. If I did, I'll put it up in the corner, one of these corners of the screen right here. But uh, when I haul something heavy, this is the second time it's happened. This is a heavy 3,500. The last time, the first time it ever happened to me, scared the hell out of me, it was when I was hauling um, a Ram, was that a 5,500 or 4,500? I think it was a Ram 4,500. All right, we got it delivered. So, it's giving me like this fuel pressure problem. And when I'm trying to go up a hill or something, I, I really can't I really can't tell what, what's causing it. The last time it did it, or I should say the first time, the first time it did it was with that Ram 4500. I was low on diesel and I was going up a hill. So, I didn't know if, I mean, I was going up a pretty good hill too at that. I don't know if that's what caused it or not. It's uh, it, the code is P0087, and it's uh, something related to the fuel rail low pressure. So uh, after that time, I feel I made it to a gas station. I limped it to a gas station, filled it up, and uh, it did pretty pretty well after that. And I've hauled some other heavy stuff since then, and it's been okay. But this one is probably heavier than that last one and uh we were on the interstate i think we were cresting the hill but i had cruise control on and y'all know i'm gonna keep missing that seat over there <laughs> when you have cruise control on and when you're trying to go up a hill it it revs up to try to keep your you know keep your uh what you call on and i do ride with the tow haul on so um i keep that on but 
this particular time it did it it was trying to go up here i, I use cruise control so much especially when i have uh, light cars and and when i'm not having no car on the trailer i use cruise control all day so i get used to it but with this heavy thing on the back and trying to go up a hill you know it wants to rev up real high and it started cutting out it started sputtering and i was like oh hell what is this i checked the light and it was p0087 again so um I don't know. I pulled over. I had five gallons. I had a quarter of a tank at that time. I put five gallons in it. I didn't use cruise control no more, but I went 30 more minutes and filled up the tank. And um, we had an hour and 40 minutes left from when we filled up. And it came out here just fine. Um, didn't use cruise control, like I said. And now it's done and we are about to go back home. So right now it still has a check engine light. That's for EGR recirculation. Code. The code is not in there right now. I got like two hours till I get home, but I don't know, man. I looked it up and uh, and it looked like it was the fix is either like fuel injectors or fuel pump. So if that's the case, it is what it is. It got to get done. And uh, it'll probably be a whole completely different truck after that. A few mileage might go up, and uh, it just might be, it just might drive totally different. So if we have to do that, then we have to do it. Um, but you know, it is what it is. It's a part of running the business, it's a part of, you know, maintenance. So we'll get it done. As y'all see right here, we got two hours and four minutes to get home, man. So I accounted for that when I gave him the price. Um, where I left from, the car I dropped off. It was two and a half hours to where this car was at. Um, but I dropped Bentley off. Bentley was with me. It's gonna take more than that to rock my world. <laughs> but we were doing some little pedals that very short. It wasn't even worth filming. And uh, I dropped Bentley off. And from the house, it was an hour and 30 minutes. So from the house to pick that truck up right there was an hour and 30 and then two hours and 40 to deliver it. And now two hours dead head back to the house. But I got 950, so that's pretty good. I can't complain. That's almost like $6 a mile pick up the drop off. But total, it's like in the four, $4 a mile, I think. Something that's total miles from where I was at to, to dropping it off. And uh, you know, it's pretty good. But uh, like I said, man, the beast is acting a little weird, but we're gonna get it figured out, man. So till then, man, we're gonna holler this light on. We gon' damn it came out that came out bad. Until then we're gonna holler at y'all later on. Peace!